Hey guys, before we get into the video on how we made this hog, make sure that you drop down here in the corner, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, keep our subscriber count and our likes growing. We hope you enjoy the video and we'll catch you on the next one. What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tasker's Barbecue Supply. I'm Steven and today we've got something a little different for you. So as you can already tell from the video, our scenery has changed a little bit. We're actually at a client's house today. Uh, we're gonna be starting a whole hog roast for them. So it's late in the evening, the night before. Um, we're just gonna get the grill prepped up and everything tonight. We're gonna walk you through the trimming process of this whole hog, getting it prepped and ready. Um, and then it'll just go back in the cooler for tonight. Very first thing in the morning, probably around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, we will have the grill fired up to around 250 degrees. And we'll be putting this whole hog going for about a 12 hour smoke. Uh, so we're gonna change our setting here a little bit. We're gonna move over to our prep table we have set up next to our trailer. And we are going to trim this hog up, get it ready to go, and then throw it back in the cooler until tomorrow. All right guys, what we have here is a whole roasting hog. This hog weighed in right about 70 pounds as it come from the butcher. We went ahead and got it thawed out and ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim it up and get it ready to put on the grill for in the morning. And all you're gonna have to do on most of these roasting hogs that come uh, is just do a little bit of trimming around the belly cavity, around the neck, um, and around the butt of it just to get anything that you don't want to be cooked off of it. Other than the outside, the outside can stay the way it is as long as you're doing the skin on, which I'll always recommend if you're doing a whole hog. Um, so trim work is very, very simple. Now, one thing I always do recommend if you're doing whole hogs, keep it around this size or even smaller. Um, the bigger hogs, when you get to 100 pound and plus hogs, the problem you have is the meat that is thin and tender tends to dry out before you can get your large cuts of meat like your hams and your shoulders to finish off. So you end up getting a lot of dry meat uh, uh, and meat that's just not real savory and juicy like you will on a smaller hog around this size. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna see if there's anything that we need to trim off. A Little bit of excess belly skin right here. We'll trim it off. Everything else on the backside here looks good. They did a very good job cleaning this hog out, so there's really not much to mess with uh, on the back side here. So everything looks good here. We come up toward the collar. Uh, there is a little bit I want to cut off up here, a little bit of stragglers. So we'll get that off. Down here, get that cut open. So we just want to make sure everything's nice and open. Um, get, like say, anything that we don't want seen or don't need to be cooked off um, anything that's excess is just going to waste time um, it's not going to get your seasoning down into the good meat so you want to take any of that kind of stuff out and obviously anything that doesn't look pleasant uh, once this hog is done because we want it to look nice when we display it as it's finished And really, this hog was done very nicely. There's not much to trim. We're gonna get a little bit over in here. Move this leg over. Cut a little bit out of this collar area here. Really guys, that's about it. Uh, really surprised this didn't take much trimming at all. So there's not much to this one. We'll bring this back in here. A little bit of fat right there we don't need. Get that skin off. All right, guys, other than that, it's pretty well good to go. So now all we're gonna do is I'm gonna wash this hog out, make sure it's nice and clean. 
Uh, we're gonna throw it back down in the cooler. It'll stay all night in there. When we go to get the grill fired up, we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna do an injection throughout the whole hog. And then we'll do a dry rub on the inside, try to get as much coverage on the meat as we can, because obviously when you have the skin on the outside, you don't put dry rub on the outside. Um, it will caramelize and burn. So you don't do any seasoning on the outside. Um, we try to get as much flavor as we can throughout the meat on the inside. And then we'll season the meat as it comes off the hog when it's finished. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna get this cleaned up, get it back in our cooler, and you will see us back here in the morning when we have the grills fired up. All right, guys, it's now four o'clock in the morning. We have our pig laid out here, uh, just kind of coming up to temperature a little bit. Um, it's pretty cool out, so even at, uh, even at these temperatures we have out here, it's not gonna come up to like a room temperature, but we're just trying to get it out of the cooler, get it up temp a little bit, uh, so that it's not super cold going on the grill. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing injected and seasoned. We have our Assassin charcoal smoker warming up now. We're gonna be running at 250 degrees. Uh, we're running the Jealous Devil Max Briquette Charcoal, and then we have some chunks of cherry wood in there uh, to give us our nice smoke flavor throughout this cook. So all I'm gonna do with this hog is I'm gonna use our standard Butcher's Barbecue uh, pork injection, and I just took a large uh, fresh water container. Um, this is 101 ounces. All right, guys, I apologize. We had a little camera malfunction four o'clock in the morning, so <laughs> forgive us for that. Um, what we've done, uh, we actually went through and injected the whole hog. We got a lot in the shoulders and in the hams. You want to get as much as you can back in these hams. Um, you can kind of see how puffed up the tenderloin is. I put a lot in the tenderloin. Um, I'm just trying to get as much moisture into this uh, pig as I can before it goes on the grill. So I just pumped the shoulders, I pumped the butt full, um, we got as much as we can. We got it up in the cheeks, as you can see, they're nice and puffed up. There's a lot of good meat in there along the back of the neck. So I basically got any large chunks I could and got them filled up with injection. After that, we splayed this thing open and basically what we have on the inside, you can see all of our injection and our seasoning kind of running out of it. We did a mix of uh, Unts Works. So Mike Unts makes some amazing seasonings. Um, we used a bunch of his seasonings and we used the Unts uh, Works and then went over top of that with honey. You want to get as much seasoning as you can on the inside of this hog. As you can see, we've got it seasoned up really, really heavy. Um, don't be afraid to go very liberal on the inside on the seasoning because you remember the only flavor you're going to get from this is what you inject it with and what you put seasoning on the bottom. You can't get any flavor from the top. So a lot of that will kind of render off and get mixed up when you, when people start picking from it, stuff like that. So, uh, don't be afraid to go really, really heavy. So we went real heavy on the seasoning on the inside, like I say, base layer of the works and went over top of that with a good layer of honey. Um, now it's pretty much ready to go on the grill. So we're gonna lay this thing up. This is gonna be cooked racer style. So basically, as you see it like this right here, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wipe the skin down, get any seasoning off of it, get any moisture off of it, get the skin as dry as possible. The drier you get the skin, the better turnout you're gonna have at the end of this cook. So we'll get it as dry as possible, and then we're gonna go ahead and get it on the rack and ready to go in the grill. Uh, today we're gonna be running our Assassin, again, 250 degrees. Um, and like I say, this, this hog's probably gonna take around 10 to 12 hours. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the skin dried off here and get it on the rack, and we'll meet you back here in just a minute. All right, guys, as you can see, we have our whole hog in here ready to go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and slide it in. And like I said, we patted the skin nice and dry. So now what we're gonna do is after probably three or four hours of cook time, um, we're gonna come back and just kind of start spritzing the skin with a little bit of Pam or some type of cooking oil to get it really nice and crispy. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do before I slide this in, I'm gonna put a piece of wood in its mouth here to kind of hold its mouth open so that we can display an apple in its mouth when we go to display this for the customer. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing uh, slid in here and start getting some smoke on it. We'll be back in several hours when we start doing some more to this. Other than that, right now, all you gotta do is just let it rest. 
Good morning, everyone. We're back. So it's 1130 now. Uh, this hog actually went on the grill right about 530 this morning. Um, so we're about halfway through a cook. Our temperatures are looking really good. Our assassin's been holding steady at 250. We're looking at about 160 in the hams and 165 in the shoulders. So we're coming along really nicely here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start spraying the skin down with some Pam, uh, any type of cooking oil. You just wanna start at this point getting some oil on the skin. That'll help get it tight and get it crispy. Um, obviously with a smoker, you're not gonna have a super crispy skin like you would over an open pit, but we wanna try to make it as uh, edible and as presentable as possible. It'll help darken up the skin and everything a little bit too. Now we haven't tended the ears or the snout or anything yet. They're still looking pretty good. If they get to the point where they start getting uh, too dark, I will actually put some foil over the snout and I will put some over the ears to keep them from getting uh, burnt or too dark. Uh, we do have a piece of wood in its mouth now, kind of propping the mouth open. If not, it'll tighten up. Uh, we like to try to stick an apple or something in its mouth when it's done, if we can. Um, but this has come along really nicely. And honestly, we have not touched this hog since we put it on. There's nothing we have to do to it. Just let it keep riding. At this point, we'll throw some Pam on it, and then that's it. We're just gonna let it keep riding in this grill. All right, so like I said, six hours into this cook process, let's open up the grill and take a look. As you can see, that hog looks absolutely beautiful right now. We're just gonna start coating it down with some oil to start darkening that skin up a little bit. All right, and that's pretty much all we have to do at this point right here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and slide this in. Now, in about another hour or two, we may go ahead and spin this hog around. Um, it's cooking pretty evenly, but I just wanna make sure we're not getting the backside a little bit more done because of that wall on the back. Um, that heat kind of comes straight up and doesn't circulate quite as much. So I wanna make sure we get a nice even process on it. We're not too far from putting a tent over the ears because they're getting pretty done uh, and on the snout. So probably within the next half hour or an hour, we'll tent that up. But other than that, we're just gonna kinda of let it keep riding. Uh, it's looking beautiful and cooking up really nicely. So let's get it back in the heat. All right, everybody, our whole hog is done. As you can see, it turned out beautiful. We have a really nice color skin. That skin's nice and crisp on there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this carried down to uh, where their buffet line is gonna be. And we're just gonna set this up, cut across the top and let everybody pick the meat off for wherever they want. Um, that's how the customer we're doing it for wanted to do it. And we're here to please them. So that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, we're gonna try to snag some pictures after we get it set up down there and post on here so that we can have show you some pictures of how it's set up on the table. Um, but it's ready to go. So it ended up finishing at right at 200 degrees uh, in both the hams and the shoulders at about eight hours. So it actually finished up a little bit quicker than we thought. Not a big deal. We just toned our grill down to 200 degrees and let it settle out for about another hour and a half and then just choked everything off and just let the grill kind of cool down as the hog cooled down. I gave it some rest time, let it come down to a temperature. It's a little bit easier for people to pick the meat off and eat it. Um, so it's had a plenty of time to rest um, and it is ready to go. It looks awesome. Um, we ended up not even having to tent the ears or the snout. Um, they curled up a little bit, but the color on them turned out per perfect. So I didn't tent anything. Um, just so you know, there was, there was no tenting done on anything on here. So that actually turned out really well. We didn't have to do any of that. The feet turned out pretty good. So I really didn't have to do anything other than just spritz it down with Pam after we put it on here. These are very, very simple. If you have a cooker that can cook for a long period of time, eight, 10, 12 hours, this is gonna be something that's very simple to do because basically all your prep work comes at the beginning. You get it prepped, you get it seasoned, get it injected, and you throw it on and just let it ride. Um, there's not a whole lot you have to do. Um, you know, if you're doing it for a function that you're a part of, you know, you can throw this on your smoker and go hang out with family, go hang out with friends and just let it ride. 
Um, so we'll be hopefully doing a few more of these here uh, in the near future. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, sorry if we had a little few glitches here. It was four o'clock in the morning. We're, we're kind of out of our element. We're, we're out on the road. So uh, we did the best we could here. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe and we'll see you back on the next one.